There has been some excellent evidence presented to Scotland's Climate Citizens Assembly. What is absolutely key now is that in developing their recommendations, Assembly members have the opportunity to reflect on what constitutes a climate emergency, not just for Scotland, but also for vulnerable communities elsewhere right now, and of course on the futures of our own children and grandchildren. The evidence that the Assembly has been presented with highlights what needs to be done, the weakness of the current response, and the fact that to tackle the drivers of this crisis, we need to totally transform our economic system in a way that actually will improve everyone's lives. So what level of climate action is necessary, needed and possible? There was never any evaluation of the seriousness of the climate emergency by the Assembly as a whole, and that is a fundamental problem. But we can piece together the logical conclusions from the relevant evidence they were presented with. Kevin Anderson points out that Scotland's current targets are not enough and that to show the climate leadership that the world actually needs, Scotland has to cut emissions by 75% by 2030 relative to 2019 levels, not 1990 levels, in order to reach real zero by 2035 to 2040, not net zero by 2045. And Scotland needs to deliver 10% per year reductions in emissions immediately. That's a total reduction by 2030 of 75% compared with its current emissions and zero carbon energy by 2035 to 2040 at the very latest. That's real zero, not net zero. Chris Stark suggests that we can't achieve even the current targets within our current system. And this implies that unless we make radical changes, the 2030 target won't be met and we can only really aim for net zero by 2045, not real zero by 2035, 2040. And Chris notes that the current plan is to get Scotland to net zero by 2045. But here's the thing. Uh, we haven't been able to model a way of getting to Scotland's 2030 target. That's because the 2030 target is so challenging. In the next 10 years or so, we're going to need to have Scottish emissions. David Ray outlines what the difference is between real and net zero. It's the difference between taking radical action to reduce emissions right now or relying on unproven technologies to suck carbon out of the atmosphere at some point in the future. There's quite a big reliance on these negative emission technologies. So essentially sucking carbon out of the atmosphere and putting it back in the ground. And those technologies, um, they exist, but they're not really proven at scale, certainly at the scale that we would need them in Scotland. And they're supposed to come online in this climate change plan update by the end of this decade. So by 2029, we would have carbon being sucked out of the atmosphere. And that's, that's a bit of a, that's quite optimistic to see that, that kind of magnitude of, of carbon capture and storage happening by then. So what is driving the climate crisis and what is the solution? Kevin Anderson has explained that the current 2045 target is just not ambitious enough. Chris Stark is saying that the target is too ambitious for the, our current system. And then Dave Ray is saying that the 2045 plans depend on unproven carbon, carbon capture technology. So what can we do? What have other experts said to this assembly about the cause of the crisis and what should we do? Sometimes it's really hard to have a less carbon footprint because all the shops are importing stuff to make more money because like, they think it's just up to them to make money whereas it's actually not because they're killing the planet doing that. So I think it's up to the government and the shopkeepers to reduce plastic and reduce the food miles and all the food. What we measure and what politicians are accountable for shapes their actions and the policies they draft and enact. Often gross domestic product, GDP, is used to measure growth of our economy and that growth is often what is thought to be key to the success of a country. At a smaller scale for many, though not all businesses, profit is often seen as the ultimate goal. The key to addressing the challenges ahead is to understand what's important to people. Well-being, children's health, lower bills, convenience, and then to design policies and interventions that achieve these goals, as well as radically cutting emissions.
the markets need to play their part, government can play their part, and, and communities can play their part. That, you know, as you said, Rachel, the triangle. And yet, Julia, are we doing enough? Like, what's what's not getting us there? Why, why are we not succeeding? Why are we still in the state that we're in? In response, Julia Steinberger points out that we can live really good lives in a sustainable way. But the problem is that there are really big obstacles that are actually driving us constantly in the other direction, very strongly so. And a lot of those do have to do with basically who's been the powerful industries and how they've been sort of bringing government over to their side through budget shares and subsidies. And, um, and we really have these very strong economic su- structures that reward very bad behavior. So we have corporate actors who've been lying, like the fossil fuel industries who knew, as long as I've been alive, more than 40 years, um, that they were driving climate change and refused to tell anybody about it, not their investors, not the government and uh, who still to this day receive a lot of subsidies from us. So they receive our tax money. And so we're not even stopping doing the bad stuff. So I think one of the things that we really need to change is we really need to stop doing the bad stuff through our governments, through our private consumption and through our support for industries that are like the tobacco industry. They took a lot of uh, the same methods in terms of disinformation and tried to convince everybody that we need them, that we are addicted to them because they're good. But no, we're addicted to them because they're drug pushers. So based on the evidence heard from nine-year-olds to 90-year-olds, the cause of the problem and what we need to do to tackle it is clear. Here's David Attenborough on the BBC. Our economic system has been based on the, on, on the profit principle, that you have to come out at the end of the year having made a profit. And, not, and the bigger profit you can make, the better it is. And in the, t- in the short term, that works but then it ends with disaster. So that you have to at last have the wisdom to realize that you can live sustainably, that it is possible that your economics could work on a rather different system from the one which is based on profit. If this was an XR presentation on how we see the scale of the crisis and the speed of response required, we would be arguing that Scotland needs to reach real zero emissions by 2025. We would argue that this can be done through an utter transformation of society and the economy in a way that ensures everyone has secure work in flourishing communities. And this is actually only possible through us collectively deciding that we will no longer accept that a few people can take such a disproportionately vast amount out of our shared economy and control so much of our print broadcast and social media and wield so disproportionate an influence on our political parties. But this is not an XR presentation of our analysis and proposals. This is simply an attempt to highlight the core dilemma that you have been presented with through the evidence that you've heard. On the one hand, you've heard that the current policy is unable to deliver even on current climate targets because of the constraints of our current system. Then on the other hand, you've heard that the speed of our response to the climate emergency has to really rapidly accelerate if we are to stand a chance. If both these arguments are true, then something has to give. It's up to you, members of assembly, to decide how you respond to this really core dilemma. We, XR, simply wanted to make sure that the implications of the evidence you've heard is made totally crystal clear. Will we, as a society, choose to take a different course and seek to completely change the system that is devastating peoples and species right now? Will we secure ours and our children's futures by stepping up to the challenge, by naming the root cause of accelerating emissions and climate change, and by demanding the transformation of an utterly unnecessary and counterproductive economic system that benefits a few at the expense of people and planet? So this is, this is the moment we actually have a chance to turn the ship around with this assembly. Can we and you be bold enough to face the reality?